Okay, traders, welcome to today's live analysis session. If you can hear me and you can see the Tickmill welcome screen, uh, could you type a Y in the chat box just so I know we can uh, we can get going here? Hi, traders. Just once again, I uh, just want to check if you can hear me and you can see the Tigma welcome screen of why in the chat box. Thanks a lot. Okay, let's uh, let's get going. So um, before we start, obviously, I want to pay attention to the risk disclaimer. As we know, um, trading any financial instrument carries uh, an inherent risk and uh, you there is the potential of losing more money than you necessarily have on deposit. Uh, more importantly for today, the uh, views expressed by me and any, uh, any opinions here are solely mine. They are not indicative of Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. Okay, so uh, for those that are here for the first time, a very brief introduction to me. Uh, like I say, my name is Patrick Munley. After I graduated from uh, university, I joined a uh, city PLC consulting firm. After a couple of years learning the ropes, I left with some colleagues and went on to co-found and successfully exit a consulting startup uh, post a merger in, uh, in late 2004. I then moved on to explore my passion for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading or probably more appropriately day gambling uh, the S&P 500 and after some early beginners luck I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, uh, my beginners luck ran out and as the market phase changed and I began to average down into losing positions. I basically gave back all my gains and ultimately experienced a significant six-figure financial hit. Uh, to say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is uh, it's an understatement. At this point, I had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading and sort out a mentor uh, with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for 18 months to uh, to two years. It was a period during which I upped not just my technical game, uh, researching and developing a strategy that suited my personality, uh, but I extensively back and forward tested this strategy and developed a rigorous risk management approach to underpin it. Uh, but most importantly, during this period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably the, the most important watershed shift uh, was when I went from uh, from being a highly goal-orientated, financially focused individual, uh, focused on financial gains to really becoming uh, purely process orientated. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely really on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and have a professional trading mindset, then you understand the true nature of trading, which is it's a numbers game in which you are simply playing the probabilities. And so what you lose then is the emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcome of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or strings of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, that my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Um, since 2013, the performance you can see on the screen is, uh, is since I've been managing uh, investor capital through a managed account service, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've also mentored over 100 private traders of all experience levels from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. 
I've consulted to numerous brokers and trading education brands, contributing written content, webinars, and live presentation content on a range of topics from market analysis to trading strategy, development, and execution. In addition to my fund management and private mentoring, I'm also now a resident market expert at Tickmill, whereby I provide a daily market outlook covering uh, four of the FX majors. And then I provide a, uh, a chart of the day or a technical setup that I'm, I'm tracking in the markets for the trading day ahead. My other passion project is as head of trading and trader education for a leading education brand, fxcareerswap.com. We offer development and funding to retail trading talent at FX Career Swap. We don't just develop retail traders, market and trading strategy knowledge. We work on mindset development through our structured program that culminates in uh, managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. For those that are interested in that, there are some contact details on the screen currently whereby you can get in touch and find out more information about what it is we are doing at FX Career Swap. Uh, so today we're just going to do something um, slightly different. We're going to, I'm going to go straight into the charts today and we're going to just walk through um, a bunch of charts and really uh, I'm going to break down step by step how I technically frame the market data uh, to help identify um, probable price paths or market maps that then give me specific locations on a chart where I'm interested in looking at uh, price action to see if there is a trading setup. So um, we're going to start here with the S&P 500 and, um, and we've got data going back here to the beginning of the year. Um, this is, well, not even the beginning of the year, it takes it, well, yeah, just uh, just into February there. Um, so this is sufficient, really, for us to, to frame where we're up to at the moment and to get an idea of, um, of where the, the next trading opportunity comes. A um, couple of things here in terms of it, it, the, the indicators I have on the screen, which it's, uh, I guess, useful for you guys to be aware of. Um, the price envelope or price bands you can see are volume weighted average price bands. So where you've got these two green lines below and the two red lines above, uh, the red lines below represent uh, two, two and three standard deviations away from a 20 period look back. Uh, the, the red lines above represent two standard deviations and three standard deviations above the mean, which is the 20 period look, look back. Uh, down here, we have a uh, 100 period look, look back on the VWAP. So this ostensibly gives us um, what, I, what I refer to as the monthly trend on the chart. This uh, 20 period look back that uh, provides the uh, central tendency of the two to three standard deviation envelope uh, gives what I consider to be the, the weekly perspective on trend in, uh, in the current market. And then we have um, this five period look back. Now, um, in the settings I have on, um, on my chart here, what I'm able to do um, using these indicators is if I turn off the five periods, um, not that one, let's see, if I turn off this five period uh, VWAP, you'll see that the candle colors change slightly. And that's because the five period that I'm using actually colors the candles to represent the current trends. So I refer to that as the daily trend. So you can see here that this is a red candle as per the normal price chart. You can see here it's a red close. So this would be considered a bearish candle. And you know you may think that uh, depending upon your trading strategy, this is an opportunity to sell, sell this market. But using the trend candles, um, what we get is the, uh, the color remains green. And that's because price is still trading above that five period look back. And so what this does is when you're, certainly when you're starting out and even once you've been trading for a while, it just helps for you to visually be able to quickly identify trends. And so um, that's, those are, that's how I frame the actual price data. A couple of other things here that I've got. Um, this, uh, the orange lines represent um, the projected weekly range for the S&P 500. Um, the purple lines project 
the monthly range. And again, I use the word project. Um, these, these are just guides and, you know, price, whilst price does have a tendency to respect them, and um, they're certainly not in and of themselves going to be sufficient for us to execute a trade. But when we think, when we look at, at identifying trade locations and we're working on the premise of uh, trying to identify high probability zones, when these levels coincide with other technical levels, then we can use that as further confirmation for our trades. I also have on here the monthly pivot with the monthly S3 and the monthly R3. So that's monthly re resistance point, a monthly support point. And then I also have the weekly pivot and the weekly S3 and the weekly R3. Down here in terms of cycle and momentum, I have the RSI stochastic. Um, this is the daily RSI stochastic. And then this uh, slower RSI stochastic represents where we are um, from a weekly perspective in terms of uh, the RSI stochastic. And then down here, last but not least, we have the psych indicator. Um, the psych indicator which is essentially an enhanced RSI just gives some, uh, some better data and readings in terms of um, sentiment in the market. So when it's green, uh, we can anticipate that the, the market is bullish. And when it's red, we can anticipate the market is bearish. So I use these in, a, in, a, in, a, in different combinations to, uh, to provide uh, visually very quick information about where we are in the market. Okay, so when, so when we're looking at this price pattern here, we know currently price is trading above the monthly volume weighted average price and above the weekly volume weighted average price, and we're trading above the monthly pivot. So our immediate read here is that the price action is, is, is bullish. We can see that the uh, psych indicator is positively orientated and we have, although the uh, near-term RSI stochastic is over, what traders would be considered to be overbought, we can see that we've got a positively uh, diverged longer-term cycle. So for now, the, the trend in terms of this, this market is to the upside. So if we're thinking in terms of upside, well, then we want to think in terms of targets for this, this current upside move and where there might be a potential for price to correct from. And that can provide us with a, uh, a reversion trade um, as opposed to a momentum trade. When I talk about reversion trades, I'm not, I, we're not calling tops or bottoms in markets as such. What we're identifying is high probability locations where price could correct. So if you start from the, if you, a big challenge that traders face when they're, they're starting out in the markets is this, I, it seems easier to pick tops and bottoms than to trade with the trend. Um, for whatever, it, it appeals, I think, in, in main to, to people's egos and uh, this idea of being the master of the markets and being able to, to pick the top or the bottom of the market. Once you become more experienced in, in trading um, and in markets as such, you realize that we're not here to predict the markets as traders. That's not our job. Um, when people ask me, you know, whether I think uh, the euro is going or the S&P, I, I don't care where it's going. All I care is that there is vol that it's going somewhere, that there's volatility. Volatility is what's incredibly important for traders to, uh, to make money. And so this idea of being able to predict the market isn't really important to me. What's important is being able to trade it. And to trade it, we've got to have a plan, obviously, and we've got to have a consistent approach. Some, we've got to have some type of strategy that we're consistently applying. Because as long as that strategy has a positive expectancy, and it, believe me, it doesn't need to be particularly high, but as long as it has a positive expectancy, then if you continue to apply that strategy over and over again, and you have a long enough series of outcomes, that strategy should deliver positive returns. So in terms of when we're talking about these target areas for correction, or, or let's uh, say uh, reversion trades, we're not talking, I'm not predicting that or, or, or thinking when I get a target area that this is going to be the all time high or all time low in, in that market. That's irrelevant. What's relevant is that we're able to, one, have the technical know how to be able to identify a potential reversal zone, which sets up a reversion trade. Um, and that, that's, just, you know, that's a skill that you, that's in, important to have. And in having that skill, you can build confidence in terms of your understanding of reading markets. It's, as a trader, it's important to be able to read a market. Um, but the, you know, the, like I say, the, the technical, the, the, an, the analytic side of, of being a trader 
is, um, is far removed from the actual act of executing trades and managing trades because one appeals to your intellectual and, uh, and or has a, a high uh, has a high level of intellectual stimulation, um, being able to you know analyze the charts and set and see where the opportunities lie. Um, but the actual pulling of the trigger and putting a trade on and managing a trade and managing your profit and loss and managing your risk. That, that's a whole other story because that's that's a very visceral experience. Certainly, when you're you're, you're less you're less experienced in trading, you know, watching every tick in, on the chart, um, you know, can give can give you a feeling of uh, elation or deflation if if the if, if the if the price action is going against you. But once you become or once you move to that process mindset that I talked about in the introduction, there, this this living and dying with each trade or the outcome or every tick on a chart becomes uh, becomes far less important to you. Because what you know at the back of your mind is that if you're, if you're trading your strategy consistently, then over the long run, you should come out on top. And this is, very, this is another very important concept, I think, for, um, for retail traders, certainly um, those who are attracted to trading by the idea of uh, you know, these Instagram ads showing people in gold-plated uh, Lamborghinis, et cetera. Um, it's very difficult when you're starting out uh, to, to, to glean what I would consider an income from trading because you've got that, you, you know, you, one, you've got the, the period of acquiring knowledge and acquiring understanding and then ultimately being able to apply it. And even then, um, a lot of traders struggle with capitalization because if you're undercapitalized, it, what, it mean, what, what that essentially means is that no matter how good your strategy is, um, if you're undercapitalized, you are going to at some point overextend yourself, take on too much risk, because you become frustrated by the fact that, great, your strategy is working, but if, you know, if I have a 30% year or a 50% year on a, you know, a 3,000 pound account, that's 1,500 pound return, um, whilst the percentage returns are fantastic, um, the financial return there doesn't really move the dial. And so it becomes frustrating that you're, you know, you're, you're, you're behaving like a professional trader, but you're not seeing professional trader in returns. And so you ultimately, or what a retail traders ultimately do is they take on too much risk and they end up blowing accounts. So when you're starting out in this game, it's, it's really important, I think, in terms of managing expectations that you certainly don't come to it as, um, as believing that it's, it could be a primary source of income um, from the get go. What you want to be doing is building it up from it being a supplemental income in the early days and building an account, et cetera, to the point that down the line, it can become a, uh, a sole income source. So that's just a, a little bit of um, input in terms of managing expectations as you're getting going in the markets. Now back to the idea of the reversion trade. So what am I looking at here? Well, we've been in this advance. You can see that price um, was you know, moving strongly to the upside. Um, the, the glide path of price in terms of the dispersion away from the monthly trend was significant. You can see this distance between um, the, the, the VWAP here. And then recently we made a high and what happened next? Well, we kind of went sideways and this sideways action allowed the VWAP or, or the VWAP to catch up with price. Now what you'll find and again, this doesn't happen every time, but more often than not, once the VWAP does catch up to price like this, unless we accelerate very quickly away from the VWAP, then more often than not, the consolidation phase we move into here is the prerequisite of, um, of a, an extended correction in this, in this instance, but certainly uh, we have the potential for, for a reversion setup. And, um, and what we want to look at when we get into this type of um, price action is, is where is that opportunity? Well, the last decline that preceded this advance, that preceded the, you know, the, the flip here in terms of the monthly VWAP being red to green was this leg here. And so what we, what we want to do is always just overlay a fib retracement because this will give us information here. Because once we take out the 78.6% retracement of the prior decline, then more often than not, we're going to retest and break the prior highs. Okay, so once we take out the seventy-eight point six percent on a closing basis, on a closing basis, sorry, we're going. We're more likely to 
um, to retest prior highs and break those highs. Once we break those highs, we then have a high probability of testing the 127 fib extension. Now, uh, I'm not going to walk through the, I'm not going to get into the, the weeds in terms of fibs today, but these, these 127 extensions above and below a swing are important and, um, and are areas certainly of technical interest. So what we know is that once we're through the 78.6% retracement here, and price did respond in and around the 78.6% retracement, we've got a pullback, we've got a correction in the trend, that just refueled the market and we, we continue to the upside. Um, so now we have this target area, or we have, a, we have an area of interest at this 30, uh, 3,728. So this brings us back to the current price action and this last, uh, this, this area here, which is our, our point of focus at the moment. So this is the correction that we, we're currently in. And what we want to be thinking about is, is this zone here, this uh, 37.28. Now, versus the current correction, I use another tool, which is a, a trend-based FIB extension. So what this basically does is it allows us to look at um, price extensions versus prior swing structures. So let me just get rid of that. So this, this, this first um, green line here that I have on the chart means that this, these two swings here are equal lengths. Okay, so by the time we get into this leg here, by the time we hit this price uh, level here, this 35.72, that's that basically means that we have traded an equal distance in price versus that prior swing over here. Okay, so that's an area we always want to pay attention to. Why do we want to pay attention to that? Well, because equality in markets, equality objectives. Um, if we adhere to the idea that markets are, um, by their very nature, uh, made up of, of human beings making billions of trading decisions, um, then what we know about humans is, from a psychological perspective, that given a similar set of circumstances, that uh, humans will tend to act in a, a similar fashion. So once, once prices travel equal distances, more often than not, we'll certainly see a pause if not a, uh, a correction in the opposite direction. So that's why we want to pay attention to this equal, this equality objective. And the other level that's, that, for, uh, that has significance is a 161 extension of the prior swing. So what this, this area here represents 161% of that prior swing here projected into the future, okay? So these are the two levels that I pay attention to in terms of prior swings. So when I'm tracking the market advance from this low, I have two key levels in mind. The 100% extension, which is, it gives us 35.72 here. And you can see we, we plowed through it on the first test, but interestingly, we closed below it on the day. So I mean, this, these levels will come up over and over again. And then we have the uh, 37.81 level just above us. Uh, the, this is the 161 extension. And we know that we're paying attention to this 127 extension over here. And so can we see that there is a point of interest developing in this market above price, okay? So we have, um, on this daily time frame, we have about a 50 handle, 50 point um, target range here. What else do we have? Well, just above it, we have the um, monthly R3. And just above that, we have the weekly R3. So if we move to the, we keep the monthly R3 inside. And then what do we have here with this um, orange line? Well, this is the weekly predicted range resistance. And then we look at the last swing over here. So just before we went into the corrective phase, do we have any further confluence? Well, yeah, we can see that again, um, this 127 extension, which was basically pinged on that breach. And then we've got the close below the one level. So just above we have the 161 extension of this swing. So at the moment, 
what appears to be the case is that whilst we hold support, and in terms of support, we want to look at the prior swing highs, which come in here. So whilst we hold this support zone, the balance of probabilities, for me anyway, is that we should see price trade up to test, let me get rid of this, So what I'm looking for is price to hold and ultimately test this area. And from here, this is where I'd anticipate we could get a reversion setup. because what else do we have here? Well, we have the volatility resistance bands so that we know that this, a move into this area represents a test of nearly the third, the third a three standard deviation move outside of the mean. And st statistically that has an, a 90% chance of containing price action um, on a test. And so from there, so what I'd be looking at here, if we, get, if we can get up into this area, if we hold this support and we trade up into this zone, then what I'm looking for is a bearish reversal pattern. And for me, that means a candle that closes below the five period VWAP, because that's gonna give, that's going to trigger a change in terms of the near term momentum in the market, which could set up our, our corrective phase. Now. Where, what, where do we target with a corrective phase? Well, if we think in terms of basic uh, Elliott wave, and we, again, I'm not, I don't want to get down into the weeds on this today, but it's very easy to, um, to identify the pattern here. So we have a five wave advance off this low, and we now have this target zone, which we'll just label the fifth wave for now. If we get up into this area, more often than not, once if we get a reversal pattern from this level, then the target for that move is a retest of the prior wave four low. Okay. So you can see here how we're able to, um, you know, using some basic technical patterns here, identify a target zone of interest. We know now that what we're going to do in terms of how we would uh, get, tr get a trigger for this trade, what we'd be looking for. And then once we're in the trade, we know how to manage our risk because we will be using our, the, 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 the trigger, the daily, the, the, the candle that gives us our trade will be our, uh, a close above that candle will be our invalidation point or our stop. And then we also are able to quickly identify a target again using technical patterns because we know that there's a high probability of retesting this wave four low as the target zone. One final thing we're looking for, uh, which adds conviction to the idea of the reversion trade is this momentum. So we have down here, this was our last high. So this was our, our wave three high. This was the high we had in terms of um, momentum. And you'll notice that um, we, we're, as we're trading up here, as, we're, as price is, is moving higher, what we are looking for to confirm, to give us extra conviction for this trade, is that the momentum or, or the RSI, the, the, um, the psych indicator doesn't make a new high. So if, as price makes its new high into this uh, 3760 to 3780 target zone, we're looking for a reversal pattern and we're looking for a failure in terms of uh, momentum. So we don't make a new high on the psych indicator. And so that, what, that, what we're getting, the information we're getting from there is that the market is losing steam. Although we're making new highs in price, the underlying support or the rate of change that's required for that price to make that high far exceeds the prior, the prior swing high. And in that, what we get then is this idea that the market is one stretch to the upside in terms of the trade location, the price location it's trading at, and that momentum is failing and starting to wane. And in, in that, then what we can, then we know then we have the requisite ingredients or constituents to give a high probability reversion trade. Does that make sense? Is, it, is everyone following along with what I've, 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 how I've put that together, the, the constituents, the, the elements that I'm looking for, what they mean, what they represent?
Okay. Now, I did see a question pop up there. Let me just see. And it's gone. Okay, so hopefully that's, um, that will show you or, or gives you an idea of how I frame market data to identify um, potential trading or potential trade locations. And I'm not, you know, we're not just putting our finger in the air and, uh, and thinking, right, this is, you know, this is going to be the top. You can see methodically how you can build a case um, for this being an area of interest. So now what I want to do is just quickly move on to some of the opportunities that I'm I'm looking at at the moment. First one here is the uh, Sterling Kiwi. Um, we are currently trading at this, uh, this trend line support here, third test. Now, we have been consolidating heavy rotation occurring here. What I'm looking for is for a, um, a close back through this weekly pivot. So we get this green close on our candles above the weekly pivot then we can challenge this descending trend line. And so again, going back to this idea of then building the idea of a target. Well, for me, the target is going to, the initial target anyway, is going to be an equality objective versus that swing. So versus this last swing here, we're simply gonna be looking for price to replicate that swing here. Now we do have the, the, the you know, we could just, we, we could touch here. We might not make here. We might be, you know, price might be going down, might make new lows. But if, the te if this technical pattern plays out, then we also have the potential to trade up into the higher end of the range. And what do we have there? Well, we have the 161 extension of this prior swing. So the Sterling Kiwi is one that I'm watching. Uh, the Canadian dollar is another one I'm watching. Um, looking for a move through the overnight lows here um, and looking for these uh, momentum studies to roll over to uh, for us to trade lower in terms of uh, the Canadian dollar. A bunch of these I've posted on the Ticknell sites. You can, if you want more, a more detailed, uh, more detailed discussion in terms of what I'm looking at and the technical setups, you'll find them there. But I just want to quickly run through here some of the, the charts that are, that are of interest to me at the moment. Um, the Swissy, this one could be uh, setting up for a reversal here. Uh, I, I was bearish and had short positions on. I got uh, taken out of those uh, at break even. If we can get a close through the monthly pivot here, I think we could see a correct another correction develop in the um, in the Swissy. And again, thinking in terms of targets, just keep it really simple. We would have that quality objective, and you can see now versus this structure, where again nothing too crazy. We'd just be trading into um, what's currently range resistance. So if we quickly go to the dollar index here, dollar trading at, um, at trend line support again. What you'll find um, with these markets when we're in these potential fourth wave corrective phases is that volatility is sucked out of the market. So volatility, you know, is, is, what, um, is what supports the, move, the price movements or, or trend, trending type price action. Where we have lower volatility, we tend to get choppy markets that um, are range bound. And that's indicative of these wave four um, corrective phases that are frustrating to trade and tricky to trade, but um, proceed one, a wave five advance or decline that in and of itself then should be terminal and should proceed better trending action. So um, whilst we hold this trend line support here in terms of dollar index, so I'd be looking for something like this again, thinking initially just in terms of equality, which would bring us into the, uh, the monthly pivot. From there then, we could get the next leg down. And again, looking at a confluent area, immediately we can see we've got the monthly S3, the weekly S3, and weekly range, uh, predicted range support down at this 91 area. So we get another pullback there, simply thinking in terms of, again, symmetry versus this, these moves here, uh, which would take us then into the um, trend line support to act as resistance. And then we can start to think in terms of the next leg to the downside to, um, to complete a broader pattern there in terms of the dollar index. Um, what else have I got on watch here? The Aussie, um, again, what I'm looking for here in terms of the Aussie uh, is one more, if we get another leg here into, let's, let's re look at a retest of the 72. Ideally, I want to see this 70, these prior highs here pinged, we've got 
monthly R3, weekly R3, predicted range resistance. And from there, then we could look at a reversion move. Um, but I'm not, I'm not overly excited about trading this on the short side into, uh, into this consolidation zone. What I'd be looking for is this pop up into the 74.45. Kiwi, I posted this one yesterday. I think we've got a great opportunity developing in the Kiwi um, just above the current, current levels. We've got this channel that we're in here. And if the Kiwi can get up into, so something like this, get up into this resistance zone here at the 70 handle, then I think there's going to be an opportunity on the short side in terms of the Kiwi. Uh, talked about, oh, have I, let's quickly look at the Euro. So the Euro again, what I'm looking for here is, is a correction. And if we can hold the monthly pivot, then we look for this move up into the target zone here. And from there, we could see um, a more sustained corrective move develop. The alternative scenario with the Euro is that we hold, there's a pivot level here that we want to pay attention to, this 1920, because if we hold 1920, it could actually be that we are going to uh, correct meaningfully lower first in the Euro um, and test that support zone at 115 before then making that advance up into the 120 target area. Um, so those are a few of the charts I'm watching. The purpose of today really was more this idea of um, how I frame the market data to identify uh, trade locations and how you can do that in a methodical and consistent way so that you, one, you don't need to spend all day looking at the charts and, and glued to the screens that you can identify these levels uh, in advance and then get a place your alerts, price alerts, so that you don't become a, uh, a slave to these charts or a slave to the screens. Um, okay, are there any other questions before I wrap this up today? In next week's session, what I'll do is I'll show you how um, we look at momentum trades. So how we position ourselves to, to, uh, to trade with the trend. Today, I was talking more about reversion or reversal trades, but next week we will look at momentum trades. Okay, if there aren't any questions, I shall wrap this session up. Sterling uh, Cable from uh, Aslan. Okay, let's take a look. So where are we with Cable? Well, let's, uh, let's look at some trend lines in place here. So this is our current uh, trend channel that we're in. It's, it's, it's grinding sideways pattern, but it's bullish because we're trading above, above the monthly VWAP at the moment. So we have this swing here versus that swing there. Now, what can we see at the moment? Well, we've traded into a potential resistance area. We also have the 78.6% retracement. So this, we know that price is, is likely to find it a bit sticky here at 133.38. Potential double top. We couldn't get a close back through. Prices, you know, failed there to close now for the fourth time above 132.70. So what's the, you know, what could we see develop from here? Well, we could see another correction. And if we bring in the interim trend channel here, and we want to think about where we could trade to before seeing the next leg higher, um, well, to my mind, it would be that we probably pull back on the second, get like that. So we have this swing here, so we could easily see something like this, test weekly range support, and then get another move up into the prior cycle highs at this, uh, this 135 area. And then we've got the trend channel resistance just above 136.15. Uh, 136.92 is that 127 extension. And we have the 161 extension. So if we can hold, um, so if we can hold 130.50 and get some bullish reversal patterns, then I still think we get up into this 135, 136 area before we likely see a more uh, sustained correction. 
If we fail below the 130.70, then watch trend channel support at 129.50. Does that make sense, Aslan? Uh, ben, options up to 105. So uh, the sterling dollar, let's take a look, uh, sorry, dollar yen. So look, where are we with dollar yen? Well, we had this big outside reversal candle um, last week, uh, sorry, uh, the week before, and we've since then just grind down back into monthly predicted uh, range support. We tagged that basically to the pip and reversed. Can we get a bullish close today to set up another corrective phase? Equal legs. Let's just draw that in so you can see what I'm talking about. So if we get a close today back through 104.50, we flip the daily chart bullish. Uh, we, obviously, we want to see the RSI stochastic turn here, but we can easily correct back up into um, this area. We've got some competing trend channels in place here uh, with the dollar yen. So we have this channel uh, to the downside. We've now got a trend line support here coming in there, which sits within this much bigger ascending trend channel to the upside. So really want to pay attention to how we close today, because if we roll over and take out this 103.24, then we've got trend channel support back down into these prior lows. Does that make sense, Ben? But if we can hold and get a bullish, bullish turn here, then we do have the potential, I think, to see an equal leg test to the upside. Okay, if there aren't any other questions, I'll wrap this one up here and we will reconvene at the same time next week when we'll take a look at, uh, at momentum setups. Thanks very much, everyone.